All right, folks, God bless you guys, and good morning. Um, so here's what we're going to do right now. We're going to do a scripture lesson, but we're going to apply it. We're going to apply your knowledge. The application of knowledge is wisdom. So let's apply your knowledge right now. Let me show you how understanding the right side up and upside down paradigm resolves everything. The entire planet resolves everything. Okay, let's look at one the right side up is 23 chromosomes and then one upside down is 23 chromosomes. We'll call this one male, this one female. Okay, in any host body, I was made from 23 chromosomes my mom produced and donated and 23 from my dad. So when the sperm hit the egg, it formed a vesica pisces and that was the new host body that became Jonathan Clack, okay? So let me let me show you how this plays out right in front of your face and how the enemy knows this. And they love to mock you all day long. Just watch this. This is going to be an awesome, awesome lesson. So just watch. So here we go. Here's male. Okay. And this male has 46 chromosomes. And here's female. Has This host body has 46. But for the production of a new host body, 23 female plus... 23 male equals 46 new host body okay i told you you're in a self cannibalizing host body you literally destroy yourself there's only one way to stop the process to get converted now you have to be born of another spirit now let me just prove to you you are not, and I repeat, you are not born with the Holy Spirit. Anyone that thinks that is completely and utterly delusional. You're born as a child of disobedience, and you walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is at work in the hearts of the children of disobedience. And let me show you that real quick, the scripture. So we'll go to... You can go to Ephesians 2. I'll use several different versions. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in those who refuse to obey God. Now let's go down to the King James. I'm just giving you several different versions, King James. Wherein, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, look, to the prince of the power of the air. Okay, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So here's the thing. You're born a child of disobedience. That's why unless you're born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. So let me just prove that out. Using the scriptures, I always come with the scriptures. And now these are Jesus's words. He said, Jesus said to Nicodemus, okay, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Wait a minute. That's what I'm showing you. I'm teaching you to see the kingdom of God. How do I teach you to see it? Just turn that virgin upside down. It's a dead sheep. Turn the altar in the Vatican upside down. It's a female reproductive system. You know, you can take images of idols. You'll see a spot right on their forehead. Turn it upside down, becomes a mouth, and usually it's a devil. I'll, I'll show you one. I'll just pull one up. It's so easy to find. So anyway, so in order to see the kingdom, you turn everything upside down. That's how you're able to see it because when you're born again, you're able to see the kingdom of heaven. You understand? Watch. Nicodemus said to him, can, can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? See, that's how you enter into the matrix from your mother's womb. That's why the word womb, the definition is matrix. And Jesus said, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Well, see right there, what's born of the flesh is flesh. But 
it's still walking around talking and doing its thing. What spirit is running it? Spirit of the prince of the power of the air, fallen angel. That's why a long time ago I took a lot of flack. I said, no, I know what I am. I got converted though. So anyway, here we go. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the, look, spirit, capital, is spirit. Okay, now, so this is the New Testament, and this is Jesus telling you straight up. If you're not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Remember I broke down the word see for you? It means to closely examine, see that which is not obvious to your, you know, normal vision. To be able to see, you have to see past what just obvious visual perception is. You have to see way past that. That's what it means to see. That's why I broke down the word see for you in John chapter 9. Okay, so anyway, so here we go. So Jesus said, you have to be born of a new spirit. Now let's go to Ezekiel. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. Okay. And then he says, from all your filthiness and all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will put a new heart in you, a new heart I will give you also, and a new spirit I will put within you. So see, you have, remember I told everybody the night I got saved, I prayed in our Father and I said, water and light came down on me. It was like a shower. It was the strangest thing. I was in the alley and just this water was... It was like a sprinkle, like a summer, just out of nowhere, sprinkle just came down on me, and water and light came down on me, and I was literally just beaming. I was instantaneously born again, no longer part of this planet. So, anyway, so watch this. Watch what Jesus said now. Here's, this is Ezekiel, I want to show you. This is Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 26. A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness. Watch what Jesus said. Verily I say unto you, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, okay, I don't want there to be a lot of confusion. I don't want a lot of people freaking out on this. I know how people get, oh, wait, I didn't see a sprinkle. Okay. I'm going to break down the word water for you real quick, okay? When you get baptized, and you, by the way, you should be baptized. Baptism is not a requirement to go to heaven. A lot of people say it is. Who told you that? Did the guy on the cross next to Jesus that said, remember me today when you come into your kingdom? What did Jesus say to the guy on the cross? Verily I tell him, I say unto you, today you'll be with me in paradise. Did they pull that guy down off the cross and baptize him or something? No. So he went to heaven. But here's what baptism is. Baptism is your outward expression and confession of Christ as your, save, as your Savior publicly. So you are publicly announcing to the world that Christ is your Lord and Savior in front of others. And it's your public proclamation of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus said, if you declare me before men, I will declare you before my Father in heaven. So if you haven't been baptized since you got saved, it's probably a real good idea that you do. Have you ever noticed when they baptize you, what do they do? They turn you over backwards, upside down, and then they pull you up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just watch. Just go ahead. This is going to be a fun lesson, folks. So enjoy it. So here we go. So unless you're born of water right there, and the Spirit, and so here we go. Let me click on the word water. It says water as if rainy. Isn't that weird? I told everybody a long time ago. I didn't know anything about the Bible when I got saved. Nothing. Never read it. Uh, maybe opened it and looked at a couple words a couple times. I was born and raised Catholic. They don't give you Bibles. So anyway, isn't it crazy that I said, yeah, when I got saved, water and light came down on me? And look what it says here. It says like a shower, water as if rainy, literally or figuratively. Okay, so obviously, see, figuratively, that's why I don't want y'all to freak out because, you know, you get clean. Figuratively, you get a, a cleansing. 
Okay, here it is. We're going to wa walk it back. Okay, it says to rain, especially a shower. That's the root of the word. Okay, huetos. But the actual, it means water, as if rainy, literally or figuratively. So don't freak out if you didn't have a shower like I had in the alley. It's okay. Okay. So it's a figurative cleaning, but I actually had a literal one. It literally happened. Okay, so now let's drop this down and let's go back to the scriptures. Okay, now I told you this whole situation is about this, the, the whole understanding. Jesus is the foundation. He's the massive rock. He's the Petra, Matthew 16. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And Peter, I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So that's why Peter was crucified upside down. And for Peter to get, you know, think about this. For the lock to be open, what do you got to do? You got to turn this one this way. Boom, that's how you open a lock. Okay, if it's if it's gone in, if the key gone, went in the hole and got turned upside down. And think, I'm just going to be blunt. Think of the key as a penis, went inside, and that turned the whole system upside down. And everyone's born into serpent flesh after that. So you're born in serpent flesh. You're locked in. The only way to get out is to turn it upside down. And then you can see the kingdom of heaven. Turn the virgin upside down. It's a dead sheep. Turn the altar of the dead sheep upside down. It's a vagina. This is like honestly a no-brainer at this point. Because all the data's in. Now we just got to match the data to the scriptures. And it's easy. So, you know, that's why some of these people that come leave comments, no one can come to my channel and leave uh, comments on scripture that go against anything I've taught. They can come leave disparaging remarks, but they cannot ar mount a spiritual, scriptural argument against any of it. They can't. So, anyway, that's what proves it out. Here we go. Now watch this. So Jesus said, unless a man be born again of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, okay? There it is, okay? For what? what's flesh is flesh and what spirit is spirit, okay? Verily, marvel not at what I said unto thee, you must be born again. Okay, so here we go. Look, I want you to look at this word right here. Jesus said, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let, you know what? Let's look at that word. Let's let's break that word down real quick. Let's break this down. Let's do what we do, man. Let's, this is fun. This is dividing the word of God. So Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see. See, I this is the same word out of John chapter 9. That's why when I clicked on it, it's already highlighted. Let me show you something. Look, I don't have it highlighted right here. I'm going to highlight it right here. It's word 1492. This is huge. Okay, we're going to come right back here, but let's go to John chapter 9. Watch this. So we're going to go to John chapter 9, down to the very bottom. Okay, watch this. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, and they which see not might see, and those that see might be made blind. Look at what it, see. Perceive, take heed, watch. We'll walk it back. There it is. A uh, prolonged form of the second primary, which is used for it in certain tenses. It means to gaze, that is, with eyes wide open, as at something remarkable and thus differing from G991. So anyway, as you walk these words back and you read exactly what the definitions say, you'll see how it's very different. Look. And thus differing from G991, which denotes simply voluntary observation. And from 1492, which expresses merely mechanical or passive or casual vision. While G2300, and more, uh, and still more emphatically, it's as intensive, G2334, signifies an earnest but more continued inspection. Okay, so... There you go. So when you walk it back and you and you look at the origins of these words, 
to look closely at to perceive. Now let's go back to John, let's see, John 3, I believe. There it is. So here is, see, here's 1492. So see, I just highlighted this. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you cannot see. Look at this. Properly to see, literally or figuratively by implication in the perfect only to know. There you go. How is it that I know? How is it that I know and I'm able to talk with such confidence about all this stuff? Hang on one sec. Because I can see, I you know, the vision coming. I can say, look at this image of the virgin. Just turn it upside down. That's how I have the confidence because I know what's there. It's like you see the you see the dead sheep. Well, what do you think? That's just some anomaly. Let's get another image of the virgin. Dead sheep. Let's go to the Vatican. The whole thing is a, a serpent wearing a crown. The mouth of the serpent is a dead sheep. You turn the dead sheep upside down, it's a vagina. So it's like, well, now we can actually see. Before, I would have walked in and looked at it and gone, oh, wow, check out the interesting building. Or I would have walked in and looked at that altar and go, oh, wow, interesting angels everywhere. I wouldn't have seen the dead sheep. I wouldn't have seen all the stuff that was really there. But now because I've been born again, I can see it. I can perceive and know that it is there. It's a huge difference, folks. Okay, now watch. Now let's have some fun. Okay, now watch this. Remember this commercial? Uh, I want you to look at the 23-second mark. You see at the 23-second mark right here on this commercial, Heineken, new friends, the 23-second mark is where you see the number 11. See it? One, one. So, what's, so let's make this a twin system, mom and dad. Okay, male and female. So 23 and 23 is 46. That's why they put it here at the 23 second mark. I'll prove it. Here's an avocados from Mexico commercial. Let me see if I've got it up on the screen for you guys. There it is. Okay, here's an avocados from Mexico commercial. Let me show you something. Look right here. Look right here. It's a pause button. He presses the pause button, and there's two lines, and I'll show you a still shot of that. He presses the pause button and makes two lines, like the number 11, at, on track number 23. Has anybody ever seen a CD with 23 tracks? I haven't. Okay, 23 tracks. Okay, now watch. Look down here at the second mark at the commercial. It's on 23. It's a 1 minute 39 second commercial. But at the 23 second mark and 23 on the boom box, he hits the pause button. Now look, he goes for the pause button. Okay, do you see press the pause button? Right there. There it is. Pause at the 23. And they did it at the 23, right where the transition's made. That's when they reach over and do it. Right there. So, see, they're mocking you because they know, they know this. They know that you're in a duality host body system, female and male. The male donates 23 chromo chromosomes. The female don donates 23. That's why George Bush read Psalm 23 at the Twin Tower Memorial. 23 and 23. And then Barack Obama went and read Psalm 46 at the One World Freedom Tower because the two had become one. The 23 and the 23 had become the One World Freedom Tower. So he did Psalm 46. Do you understand? It's all about DNA. It's all about a host body system that is run by a spirit. So I'm going to show you the outward manifestation of the prince of the power of the air right now, okay? So I'm just going to show you how the God of this world orchestrates all his stuff. I Because I can see it. It's easy to see. Watch. This is going to be fun. Go get your spatulas now. <gasps> Spatula! <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Now, 
Watch. Let's watch this Heineken commercial. Okay, before we watch it, though, let me show you something amazing. Matthew 27, verse 45. Okay, now I've shown you the Vatican. Y'all know the Vatican is a keyhole. Y'all know that St. Peter's Basilica is a keyhole, and the Vatican itself is an upside-down cross. There we go. Okay, so here's the keyhole. Now picture when, you know, when this system started, the cross got turned upside down, and as that cross, watch, just as the cross gets turned upside down, and it turns from white to black, it goes from nine to six, it turns into the serpent. So, and the serpent is the flesh. The serpent runs the flesh, which is the number six. The number six represents flesh. So watch. So we'll take this image right here and pretend we just rotated this thing upside down. Watch. So we went from light to darkness. And now the nine turned into a six. And that turned into the serpent. You understand? So to go back the other way, what you have to do is you have to go and pretend this thing is spinning. Boom. And it goes from six to nine. Now let me show you something about when Jesus was on the cross, what the Bible says in Matthew 27, verse 45. Okay, because here it is literally the Lord God wrote the Bible using men, using the Holy Spirit through men, and he wrote the entire Bible through men by his Spirit. The Bible was written by the Holy Spirit through men. That's how it was written, through a supernatural spirit. Now look what it says in Matthew 27, 45. Now from the sixth hour, here, let me go over here. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Because when you're in the flesh, you are in complete darkness. Then unto the ninth hour, because when you turn the six upside down, then all of a sudden you got converted and there's no more darkness. You understand? Now the enemy knows that the Lord God's going to judge everybody. And one of the judgments coming on everybody is the angel of the bottomless pit. Nine, eleven. You understand? So numbers are so significant, it's almost crazy. But when you look at the reality that even in the Bible, I told you from the six hour, there was darkness because everybody's in flesh. And six represents the flesh. And then Jesus crucified the flesh. And then the Holy Spirit came back. See, then we got the Holy Spirit. Because if Jesus wouldn't have died, we wouldn't have gotten the Holy Spirit. He wouldn't have, that's, that was our new covenant, the new covenant. So anyway, so he died on the cross. He went into the depths of the depths of you know the pit. He broke down the gates of hell. He ascended and went back into heaven. Then he sends his Holy Spirit back to us. And that's our down payment on eternal life. Okay, do you understand? So this right side up, upside down thing is tantamount in understanding your identity, um, how to actually know that you're saved. I mean, it's it's on an energy level. Two magnets can't push together. Uh, you know, if there's a magnetic field stopping this, going, won't, won't. Well, if you turn this one upside down, boom. Then the entire magnetic field has changed. So look at it as a spiritual thing. Watch. Satan's spirit is contrary to the Lord's spirit. Do you understand? It's in opposition and the flesh is how he did it. The flesh is a kelepot. It's a transmutation device. That's all it is. And when everybody thinks the flesh is who you are, you've fallen for the greatest illusion there is. It's amazing. It's really amazing. I gotta gotta give it to the enemy, man. Nice trap. Y'all anyone remember the song from the band called Sticks? Welcome to the Grand Illusion. Come on in and see what's happening. Pay the price, get your ticket for the show. Yeah, and you're in it. You're in the grand illusion. And I'm helping you try and wake up. Now watch this. 
So let's watch this commercial. Look, at the 23-second mark, they show you the number 11. I wonder what the odds are on that. So look, he rings the doorbell to number six. He gets pulled in. This is a representation of your life on earth. You got pulled into the flesh party, 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 party. The woman in red, Scarlett, come on, baby, let's do it. You go fornicate, whatever. You fornicate with the world system, and then they throw you out, and then that six gets turned to a nine, but nine eleven, that's your judgment. Because the angel of the bottomless pit is the one that gets you. So watch. So look, this is a profound commercial. And then at the end of the commercial, it's got two Heineken bottles with two red stars. Because you know, you got you got the dual system. Swatch. Look at the lights. Look at the lights, Sam. Look at that. Yeah. I mean, look at just look at this. I mean, just look around a little bit. I saw something else I want to draw your attention to. I just saw something else. Let's see, where'd it go? Look right here on the, what is this? Does that look like all seen eye, all seen eye? I mean, girl wearing a mask, you get it? Girls wearing masks? Other people weren't wearing masks. Okay, now they throw him out. At the 23 second mark right here, look what's on the wall. 11, now watch what happens. There was darkness over the land from the 6th hour to the ninth hour. He's got his finger going through the hole for a reason. That's a representation of just a sex phallic thing. That's what it is. That's what got him there. You understand? So the flesh is your enemy. And by the way, that's exactly what the Bible says, that the flesh is your enemy. It wars against the soul. That's exactly right. I'm convinced there's nothing good that lives in my flesh. I saw somebody leave a comment. Well, wait a minute. Your, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Only once you got converted. Before that, you're the synagogue of Satan. Nobody's the temple of the Holy Spirit unless you get converted, then you become the temple of the Holy Spirit because you usurped the system. Just like Esau and Jacob, they were twins, you know, one right side up, one upside down. Uh, God hated Esau, but he loved Jacob. What does Jacob mean? Usurper. Supplanter is what it means. So Jacob supplanted Esau, with, and we are supplanting that host body system that's, that's, you know, run by the prince of the power of the air. And then Jesus gives us his spirit, and he supplants it. This is huge stuff, guys. This is like, whoa. This is so mind-expanding, so liberating. Okay, so anyway, so you saw it right here. You saw the 9 and the 11. There's the 11 at the 23-second mark. Let's see. You go right. There it is, 23-second mark. Number 11. Turn the 6 upside down. It's a 9. Okay, now... There's the avocados from Mexico commercial. And by the way, it's a funny commercial, but what it's about is these guys think they're in a secret society and that they're in the know when the real joke is on them because they're self-cannibalizing themselves even in the commercial. It's like, <laughs> like the real joke, the people that think because they're in these secret societies, they're up and over the rest of the sheep. They're the most foolish of all. They're the ones that are going to have the Oh, no moment. I guarantee it. Here you go. All right, let's watch. Good afternoon and welcome. What? I think I said good afternoon and welcome. Can we lose the masks? Just take them off. How can we be a secret... See?
23. See the, the bar for the pause sign? And right when he hits it, it's at the 23 second mark. That's why I showed it right there. So anyway, so 23 and 23 is 46. So see, that spirit that did this commercial is mocking everyone in secret societies because they think they're in the know, but they're really their own food chain. It's like, <sighs> it's just unbelievable. It's like, you guys think you're in, in tight being in the know when the joke is really on you. Watch. Watch. How can we be a secret society if we can't keep all of our secrets? What? Do they know we fake the moon landing? No, not yet. Or that there are only 49 shades of gray? They're suspicious, but that's not what I'm talking about. What about Bigfoot? Bigfoot's not real and everyone knows that. Did they figure out we deflated the football? No, we found a fall guy for that one. Bigfoot's definitely real. Nope. Okay. We'll just have to agree to disagree. What about Area 51? Do they know about that? No. How about Area 52 to 54? No, stop saying areas. No areas plus a number. Literally hundreds of photos of Bigfoot. Okay. Yeah, I saw him once. Wait, See? wait, Bigfoot? I'm getting it wrong. Paul Bunyan? Point is, someone is leaking this stuff. Why are you looking at me? I'm not looking at you, Anne. I'm tired. I've seen his footprint when I was Scott! What they do know is that avocados from Mexico have good fats. So they know they're healthy. They know everything. Kyle, are you streaming this? Is that not cool? No, it's not cool. It, that's what secret means. It's a secret society. Oh, wow. Secret, yep, yep. Hey, I got a like. You got a like? That was me. I like you too. At least they don't know about subliminal advertising. That's not even a thing, right? Eat that. Okay, so now look. Now the joke's on them because they're scarfing down on avocados. This is where it gets really sinister. This is how sinister our adversary really is. They made everybody laugh at this, but this is as evil as it gets. Watch. Watch this. Eat them. Now watch. They're like, what the... Okay, well, the reason they did it, and I will show you why they did it now, is here. It's the twin system. Watch. Just watch, watch me go through the pictures. Track 23 right there. The twin system, 23 and 23. Just like the twin towers, one burned up. They burned up together. They did it under the Arch of Washington. They burned the twin towers up. It says, Exitus Octa Probat, the outcome justifies the deed. They used avocados because avocados are shaped like the uterus and cervix. And avocados, let's see. Uh, here we go. And guess what? It takes nine months for a baby to fully develop in a womb. It also takes an avocado exactly nine months to grow from blossom to ripen fruit. So they're mocking us like they're eating babies. That's the joke. That's why they used 23 right here and a pause button. That's why they did it. It's no different than the Twin Towers. Let me show you. No different than putting the Twin Towers there is the pause button. It is no different at all than the Twin Towers being right in front of there as the pause button. And then the avocados, and they're all scarfing down on avocados. Let me show you the real heinous, just insane thing right here about it all. Okay, here is the real seriously disturbing part. That's what's up. So, 23 and 23, they're self-cannibalizing themselves. Get your spatulas. Okay, so that's, see, and this is, it's like a language, you know, I understand the way the serpent communicates. It's taken me a long time to fully understand how he does stuff, but I've got a very solid grasp on it now. It's a language. And so maybe that's why God made sure I spoke other languages, because I recognize what they're doing. They're using, you know, biology. They're using scripture definitions. They're using numbers that are in the concordance because Satan is saying he's the God of this world. And he's acting like he wrote the Bible. Yep, pretty, pretty gnarly stuff. So anyway, there you go. Just proved it out. The whole avocados from Mexico commercial 
Now, let me show you some more scriptures. Watch this. Okay. Now, remember, Jesus was on, there was darkness over the land from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Okay, so here's a representation of that. You know, the host body that's the serpent. See the cross right here? Just assign the number six to that serpent right there. Assign the number six to it. Well, to get out of that, you got to turn it upside down to get out of being the serpent. That's how you do it. Okay, there was darkness over the land from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Now, remember Jesus said in Matthew 16, 19, 16, uh, 16, 18, I believe, upon this rock, I will found my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then he says, and I will give to you, Peter, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And then remember I showed you the age of Ultron. He flips the vibranium think of vibration because we are we exist in a frequency and our ability to perceive the lord's voice or the devil's voice is a frequency that's why they had late that lady gaga on the uh, dion bird video they pull a locust out of her vagina but they made sure it had a frequency attached to that locust remember that's why so now you can understand everything they do when you know. Now watch this. Watch this. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Okay, there it is. Upon this rock, I will build my church. He's mocking us. And that guy looks like the devil. He looks like a demon. He's got the, you know, like the big demon horns that come down. I mean, this is just a no-brainer now. It doesn't, you know, I mean, look how this proves out everything, even the shows you're watching and clothing. We're going to do a video on clothing. Okay, now watch this. Let's see. John chapter 3, Ezekiel. Okay, here we go. Isaiah. Woe to the rebellious children. Well, you already know that, the prince of the power of the air is a spirit that's at work in the hearts of the children of disobedience, rebellious children. Remember the hieroglyph that I broke down for you? How did I show you all those images? Because I drew in all the shadows. That's why when I see someone take it and put it on their channel and then add pure and utter nonsense to it, it's like, wow, you did nothing to understand that hieroglyph. You did not blow it up into a poster. You didn't have the Holy Spirit work through you to break it down, but you're going to misappropriate it and add your spin to it? Jeez, that is wicked is what it is. It's wicked. It's wrong. So anyway, here we go. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. Look at this. And that cover with a covering but not of my spirit. Look, they strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. Think of the pyramids and think of Akhenaten. And they trust in the shadow of Egypt. Oh, wow. That's how I showed you all the stuff. I drew in all the shifting shadows. And the Holy Spirit discerned for me what I was looking at. Not Donald Trump or the Joker from the Batman movie. Yeah, here we go. Woe to the rebellious children that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering. You want to see that? Let me show you that. Watch this. That cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. You remember the Sistine Chapel? Let's look at the whole Sistine Chapel wall. It's the face of a dragon. There it is. Let me enlarge it. I, I drew in, the, again, the changes of shadow. And it revealed the face of the dragon. Let, let me go right here. Okay, so here's the eye of the dragon right here. And here's the fin, the ear. And here's the other fin, the other ear. Here's the eye of the dragon. Eye of the dragon. The nose of the dragon is Lucifer coming through with the virgin. And here's the top lip of the dragon. Here's the open mouth, the blue. Here's the chin of the dragon. So here's the face of the dragon. But I want to pay attention. There's a guy sitting right here. One of Lucifer's guys sitting right here. The Bible says you cover with a covering. 
but not of my spirit. Well, what's this whole picture of? That whole picture is of the dragon. So let's take a look right here at Lucifer coming through with the virgin. And look at his hands. Right side up, upside down. Almost like it makes an S, right? There it is. And so look, let's look at this guy right here. Look at this guy right here. What's he holding? He's holding a suit of human skin. And there is his boss right there, Lucifer, coming through. And here he is. You cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. What about the Scion commercial? Y'all remember that one? Here, let me, uh, let me do this for you real quick. See, here's the covering he's talking about. It's a suit of human skin. See the human skin? Let's put it right up there. There you go. There you go. So this guy right here is holding a suit of human skin. You cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, because this whole thing's the dragon. The whole mural is the dragon. The cumulative sum is the face of the dragon. I mean, look at this picture right here. Let's enlarge this. Just look at this for a minute. Just stare at it. Look at that dragon. Oh my gosh. There's the eye. There's the eye. There's the nose. There's the lip. There, the blue is the open mouth. Okay, look at that. I mean, there's the chin. There's the neck coming down. And the cumulative sum is a collective consciousness that's made up from all these individual images. I mean, this is just amazing, amazing stuff. So there's the dragon. And here's the guy holding the suit of skin. Wow. That's identical to a Scion commercial. Let me show you. Okay, so here it is. There's Lucifer coming through right here. And here's the guy holding the suit of skin right there. So there it is. You cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. And what is that covering? Human skin. The host body is the biggest trick ever perpetrated on anything. I mean, I can't even imagine a better trick. It's like, wow, everything looks, this is all everybody knows. Until you get converted, then you can see, oh, I'm caught in some system of control. That's right. Before you were a slave and you were blind, but now you can see and you're no longer a slave. John chapter 9. That ha that's one way you know your sins have been absolved. Watch. John chapter 9. Watch. I think we're still there. There we go. John chapter 9. Watch this. So Jesus said, for judgment I am come into this world. So see, he came, he came into this world that they which see not might see. And they which see might be made blind. Now watch this and pay attention. And some of the Pharisees with, which were with him heard these words, and they said unto him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, that means you were physically blind or mentally blind. You should have no sin. But now you say, we see. Therefore, pay attention, your sin remaineth. Because look, if I'm showing you the Vatican, it's a snake. I'm showing you the largest altar in the world's a dead sheep. And it turned it upside down as a vagina. And you're like, oh, you're crazy. Well, you, it just proves you're still in your sin. It's not any skin off my back. If you can't see it, you can attack me all you want. You're just attacking the messenger. But... The message didn't come from me. It came through me. So you're convicting yourself when you attack the truth. Do you understand? And there's all these people that do it. And that's okay. Like I said, it's a badge of honor. We're supposed to be attacked. We're supposed to be persecuted. We're supposed to be spoken all manner of evil against us falsely for his name's sake. For great is our reward in heaven. So did they prosecute, uh, persecute. The, the prophets that were before you. That's how you know you're the real deal. 
You know, you have the truth. And you know what? The enemy hates the truth, which means they hate Jesus because Jesus is the truth. There you go. It's just so obvious once you see it. And I just want to make it crystal clear for everybody. So again, Isaiah, you cover, woe to the rebellious children, and that cover with a covering look, but not of my spirit. That means there's a bunch of people running around in human skin that don't have the spirit of the Lord God. And they trust in the shadow of Egypt. Well, I showed you the whole hieroglyph. Who are they? Those that try to hide their plans from the Lord. They turn everything upside down. They're the ones from the, the pit. And they're running a lot of host bodies. So let's look at let's look at this. Let's go back and and let's look at the Scion commercial. Let's see if we can pull that one up. Let's see. I think the Twin Towers is the pause button is such a great image, by the way. Let's see. Scion, XD, Fable of Deviants. Name it. Uh, let's see if it pulls up. There it is. Okay, so watch this. So here we go. The same exact thing. Let's play it. Y'all have seen it before. In a world that is bland, colorless, and cold, where banality grows like a fungus or a mold, there live the boring sheeple who look just like each other. A darker force rides into town unleashing demon Okay, so demon a darker force rides into town unleashing demon brothers. Here come the little deviants. They come from underground. They're rising from the depths to take those sheeple down. You cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. I mean, this, this crap's in commercials. I mean, this stuff's... It's not in some commercials. It's in tons of commercials. It's on Lucky Charms. It's on... It's on Captain Crunch. I mean, if you go to a grocery store with me, you'll probably freak out of your mind. I can go through the grocery store and just do it there, 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 there. I went to Walmart one day. I'm not joking. And I just couldn't, I couldn't get out without just laughing. <laughs> I was like, ah, ah, ah. It was like, ah, where am I? I'm in Whoville. <laughs> it's like, dude, this is crazy. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's on everything. You're in their world. They're the original inhabitants. Do you understand? We were brought here. We took a trip to a faraway land and wasted our inheritance, eternal life, on prostitutes and riotous living. And we got birthed into a flesh, and we don't know where we are or who we are. Satan's greatest trick is to keep your identity secret. Your angels. That's why the whole... You know, dead sheep that's the altar of St. Peter is a bunch of angels. What's the serpent eating? A bunch of angels. Angel food cake. Yeah, that's what he's having. And we're the angels. We're the light beings that he consumes. That's it. And he doesn't want anyone to get out of here. Nope. Doesn't want anyone to make it back. So, anyway... I'm just going to keep giving you guys data every day, you know, just keep giving you more and more and more. And hopefully, you know, this will change a lot of people's lives. I hope a lot of people get converted and see the simplicity. There was darkness over the six, over the land from the six hour. Because it's all dark when you're upside down in the flesh, six until the ninth hour. Why do you think, you know, nine's a number for judgment, right? So if you get converted from six to a nine, Nine judges six, you'll judge angels. Yep. All right. Anyway, there you go. Bam, 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 and bam. Let me just check everything, make sure I gave you everything. Boom. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. There you go. It's just so pervasive. Uh, I mean, maybe one day I'll just go over every single picture in every single folder. It's just like, there's, there's so much. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to cut it off here. That's enough for the day. Absorb all that. Let's go back and watch those commercials. Type them into, you know, YouTube and watch them yourselves and freak out. Cool. All right. God bless.